Welcome back to the show, guys. Today, we're going to be looking at the best pancake PC games that are out there being modded for VR. We have a lot to talk about. So sit back, relax, and ready, headset, go. Welcome back to the show, guys. I'm Tony Hansen, joined by Rob Sprance. And today, the first thing we're going to go over is all of this VR that is happening for all the pancake PC games that are out there. People are making some fantastic mods, but are they all working? We're going to find out. We're going to talk about the best ones with you right now. So, uh, Rob, take it away. What are you loving? I know you've been playing uh, Elder Scrolls on it. Is that in your list? No. that's not, Well, Skyrim is not something that's been modded for VR because there is a Skyrim VR, but in a way, I guess, I guess you can say that's the case because Skyrim VR as itself on a PC game, if you install it and you put on your headset, looks kind of terrible. Um, actually, it just looks terrible. It plays terrible. But the modding community, which is we're going to get into a bunch of these that they've done, the modding community has stepped in and completely overhauled Skyrim VR. Uh, there's one, and if, if you don't know how to mod games, all of these that I'm going through here are really, really simple. In the case of Skyrim, there's so many different mods, but there's this site called wabajack.org. <laughs> Wabajack. And, and what they do, and I'll bring it up here, what they do is they actually create mod lists and you can have it automatically run and install instead of having to go and do all of the steps of each of the individual ones. So there's this site called wabajack.org. I think that's how it's pronounced. They have a Discord as well. What they do is they have these predetermined mod lists, and I'm going to bring up this site here. So Wabajack has all of these predetermined mod lists that are specifically for Skyrim and Fallout, those Bethesda games, but there's one called Ultimate VR Essentials, which if you'll, when I get to it, you'll see here. Um, this is it here, Ultimate VR Essentials list. And this is actually something that you, if you have uh, an account set up uh, with Nexus for all of the, you know, the mods and everything, it's, I think it's like two bucks a month. If you sign up for it, you can actually run this, follow the readme instructions that it comes with, and they're very thorough. But you do that, it runs the mods automatically. And then all of a sudden, you launch a modded Skyrim VR. So they've taken it to the fact where it looks like it's a AAA game that's made today. It has full motion controls. You can sheath things in your shoulders. And, you know, you can do all different kinds of spells. And it has all of these levels of modding uh, to take it to another level of what Skyrim VR left. Because Bethesda put out fallout 4 vr and and that's also supported as well and they put out skyrim vr and then they just pretty much abandoned it so the modding community picked it up and i cannot recommend skyrim vr with the wabajack mod enough it's so good but those aren't even the ones i want to talk about because that was actually at least designed for vr to begin with mm -hmm. there are plenty of what uh vr nerds call pancake games and i am the vr nerd in this case um, pancake games that were just designed to be flat games with no VR component whatsoever, yet modders have stepped up again and modded some of these games to, so that you can play them in VR, some with mixed results, but some are fantastic. And the one I want to start with first is the Resident Evil series. Now, anyone who has a quest knows Resident Evil 4 is out on the quest. It looks like the day it was made. It looks very old. Um, yes, it's fun to play, but it's just kind of all brown. You know, it, it has that aged look about it. Now, Resident Evil, they put out a remake of 2 and 3 for Flat Gamers, uh, fully redone graphically. And Resident Evil 7 and Resident Evil 8, those four games all use the same engine. So there's a modder that literally took the engine and modded it for VR instead of the individual games. So he's already released uh, a fully functional one for Resident Evil 2 and 3. And we're going to put the links in the bottom of this video uh, so that you can get started and go in and, uh, and do the steps. They're very easy to do, very easy to mod. 
The Resident Evil one's crazy good. It has motion controls. You can hold the gun up. You can touch things. Now, some things you can't do because the game isn't designed to do that. For example, to open a door, you can't really turn a knob and push it in like you would in a VR game. So you will still have to hit the X button when you go near a door to open it. Certain right. things to pick up, you have to hit the button. But your arms are moving free. And more importantly, when you're shooting, you can aim your gun and shoot. Right. You know, you, you, so you you really feel like you're you're playing the game, and it looks fantastic. It's not um, it's not a messed up port where you're trying to just adjust and say ah, it's better than nothing. Like this really feels like the game was made for VR. Um, and now he's done uh, motion controls for Resident Evil Seven, which has a VR version on PlayStation VR, but only on PlayStation VR. They have exclusivity to it. So there are ways to cheat and, and play it in a kind of pseudo VR with the software called Vorpix. That's going to be a whole different episode, <laughs> but um, they would just weren't that great. These I highly recommend the Resident Evils, man, because you just really feel like you're just playing the game that was made for VR. Right. And, I, and I'm lucky enough to have never played the Resident Evils. So I'm playing the remake, which is fully graphically redone only a few years ago. Mm -hmm. Full VR with motion controls. I can't recommend it enough. That's my first suggestion. Resident Evil, the engine, two, three, seven, and eight, all playable in VR. Thumbs up for that one. That's number one. Okay. Next, I'm going to mention four games in a row here, and all four of these are playable in VR to some extent. Cyberpunk 2077. Yes. Grand Theft Auto 5. Red Dead Redemption 2, and Horizon Zero Dawn. All four of these games have been modded by a modder called, his name is Luke Ross, and he was known for the Grand Theft Auto one uh, because he managed to just, to, which was, you know, very impressive for him to be able to pull it off to begin with. But he managed to use this trick where it uses alternating eyes to give you a 3D effect. So in other words... The best way I could describe it is most of the time, stereoscopic VR, both of the lenses are showing you stereoscopic the whole time. That's what the Resident Evil does. But right. depending on the engine that they did the software, it's not always possible. So Luke Ross created this virtual reality um, simulation where it alternates left and right eye incredibly fast. And that oh. somehow gives you the impression well, not the impression. It actually is. You're in VR, and it so it's, is, it is 3D. So it's faster than than actually than the eyes perceive. So therefore, it's in both places. Ah, uh, therein lies the catch. Depends on the speed and power of your computer, because if you have a very powerful computer. All four of these games I mentioned: uh, Cyberpunk, GTA Five, Red Dead Horizon. Those are all absolutely playable. Now you have to use a regular controller. Uh, you can't use motion controls at all. It has to be a controller. And when you aim, you have to aim with your head, which sounds weird, but you're always looking where you're shooting anyway to a point. Okay. But, but you have to actually move your head so that the, the actual target, you have to look where you're shooting and shoot that way. You, right. can't, you can't use your arms to, to point where you aim. That being said, you are in Grand Theft Auto's world. man. You're right. In you're in Liberty City. You're in uh, Horizon. You're Red Dead Redemption 2. You're there. And it looks great if you have a fast enough system. Now, the the alternate eye thing has made some people sick. Um, it didn't do that to me, but after playing for a while, I get a lot more fatigued than a regular VR game. And I just think it's because the, the technology's not there enough to do it so fast that your eyes can't perceive it. Right. And the, you know, I know people loves the uh, frames per second and, and uh, 120 hertz on tele on uh, monitors because it makes everything look a lot smoother. The refresh rate in VR is 10 times more important because the faster the refresh rate, the less chance of VR sickness or any weird feeling you might get. Your, your brain just adjusts a lot easier. So I would say wait for a Steam sale on any one of these games or, you know, whatever, wherever you're using it to try it out. But I will say the Grand Theft Auto 5, uh, I've played that one. I've played the Cyberpunk one. 
Uh, I'll touch on that in a second because there's two mods for that. I think the other one's a little better. But um, you can, in, in all of Luke Ross's mods, you can play these games in VR. And just to be in that world alone is worth the price of admission. All of this being said, speaking of price of admission, Luke Ross does as well charge because it's on his Patreon page. Now, he does a lot of hard work on it, uh, so he definitely deserves it. But his Patreon page, I'm going to just bring this up real quick for Luke because, you know, he did a lot of hard work. He should be able to share that here. It has to be a lot of time spent. Yeah. yeah, a lot of time spent. So if you join his Patreon for $10 a month, you're going to get um, all of these mods. But more importantly, you're going to get the updates as it comes. And you'll see here, this is GTA 5 VR plus the steering wheel. So if you have a steering wheel, you can uh, nice the car you can drive when you get out you can walk around now i have a wheel and it's very embarrassing to admit but i do i just haven't tried it <laughs> because i set it up once and i got incredibly nauseous playing racing games and i have great vr legs but man that's a whole different level when you start playing a racing game but i do want to try it so i will try and report back on this now let's go back to cyberpunk 2077 one more time uh, the developer of a software called Vorpix, which, again, I mentioned we're going to do this in another episode, but the developer of Vorpix, um, this is a software that lets you latch on to pretty much any flat game and get to play it in a simulated VR or a stereoscopic VR. Your results may vary depending on the engine. There's a community that shares all different profiles. It's very complicated to adjust. It works pretty well but it does do the same alternate eye rendering now he released a free version of this just the cyberpunk mod for people as an anniversary to his software but the one thing he added that luke Ross didn't for cyberpunk is motion controls it's not full motion controls but if you pull up the gun comes up you put your arms down the gun goes down if you uh. do if you draw, go like this you can drive the car so a little mods on mods Right, so it's exactly really what it is. So this one, I haven't tried the version with the motion controls yet. I'm going to do that soon. But uh, again, another game that as soon as it was announced, it was like that game is just made for VR. The, the difficult part is, is that that's such a resource-heavy game to begin with. Yeah. You have to, he recommends you turn most of the settings down to low or medium. But in the headset, you don't notice it as much. It's still a beautiful world to be in. So I know that uh, Cyberpunk, when it first came out, was having a lot of issues, a lot of, a lot of bugs. And um, it was just too much to to kind of take in. And then, at least on for the Xbox, when the new Xbox came out, the next generation, they uh, that kind of like helped and pushed, pushed things through. And then they were cleaning up the errors. And then I think they might have even have done something to kind of make it also handle better. And I wonder if that was part of the process of making it better for even this point of people getting to use VR with it because it is intensive. It's a, it's a beautiful game, but it's very intensive. Yeah, I think I think it's getting a resurgence now. People are finally experiencing it for what it was meant to be. They rushed it out. There's no doubt about it. Yeah. Money plays a part in it, whether, whether we like it or not. And I do think they rushed it out. And it's unfortunate because these developers did Witcher 3, which was phenomenal, right? That was a, yes, that was a beautiful game also. Beautiful game. I do. If I have any complaint, though, on the flat version of the game is I can't stand that they only made it first person because Witcher 3 you, was a third person game. And now yeah. all of a sudden it was first person. Now in VR, first person works. But when you play the game flat, I don't I just don't like it as much. It's just my opinion. Everybody's got their preference. That's just how I feel. But the game's getting a resurgence now because people are uh, magazines and all these outlets are reviewing it again now that they fix most of the issues. And it actually is a really good game. They just never spent the time. And most gamers get it now. They just said, all right, I'm just going to pull back for a year. And when I start reading good shit about it again, I'll dive in. And that's exactly what happened. So those are those mods. I've got two more. One's technically not a mod, but we'll get into that in a sec. The next one is the game Alien Isolation, which is you on a ship. It was a very scary game, flat. There is a mod called Mother VR. And again, we'll have these links down below so you can check them out. And if you're just listening to this, you can go to our YouTube channel, Ready Headset Go, 
and you can check out these videos and more importantly get the links that you need um but I'll put that down there as well. But Mother VR, again, you play it with a controller. There's no motion controls, so you have to use like an Xbox controller. But you're in the alien ship being chased by an alien in VR. And it's one of the much, much better mods out of the ones that are out there. It really looks fantastic. Like you, you're in it. So if you're okay with sitting down with a controller and just putting your headset on and playing, I'm telling you, this is a fantastic one, and it's really scary. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. almost just as scary as some of the Resident Evils. It's really that creepy. So I highly recommend Mother VR. And the last one isn't really a mod, but it behaves like one. And that is the, the game Hitman 3. Now, the Hitman series I love. Always love the, the flat Hitman games, the pancakes, excuse me. Being able to go and snipe and kill people in all different ways and do these missions. They announced a few months ago that they're releasing Hitman 3 in full VR. And people lost their minds because, you know, let's let's face it. PC gamers right now are not getting that many VR games versus right. everybody, everybody's throwing things at the Quest. So you're getting much, much lower graphics, much lower resolution because Quest has a lot of headsets. So people want to make money. That's why they make games. Unfortunately, sometimes that's the only reason why they make games. So the fact that they announced this was like, oh, my God, we just got AAA title. And then they announced that all of the maps from Hitman 2 and 1 also can be played. So you've got all three Hitmans fully in VR. Sounded great, but people went nuts when it came out because the graphics seemed to be forced to a low resolution, no matter how nice of a headset you had. Some things were very janky still. Even though you had motion controls, you still had to revert to button controls at certain times. Some of the mechanics, like how you throw is weird. Like you have to aim with one hand and then throw and little things like that. But once I got over the little complaints, it's really fun. It's a very fun stealth game. Uh, so it behaves like a mod. Like some of these mods are better. The Resident Evil mod is better than the official Hitman 3 VR release. But if you can get Hitman 3 at a discount at any point, I strongly recommend you try the VR component because while it is jank and some of it's weird, at the end of the day, you still get to do these missions and sneak around. And once you kind of get over all of it, and I will say this too, for those of you who are trying it on Steam, boost the super sampling up like 500%. I know this sounds insane. But trust me, if you have a good enough video card, it will actually make it look way better because it does look fuzzy for some reason and it's a modern day game so it shouldn't so, so it's, it, it's interesting because you know you, this feels like to me in some of the aspects of what you're talking about like when uh first person shooters were just making their debut and, they, and then obviously years past that because you had a lot of people doing different setups with the controllers and you had to keep learning the setup for each one to play the game for that one then you get used to it then get used to it then get used to it and then right. it kind of became to the point i remember saying oh wow this is the same setup as halo i don't have to relearn it and then they kind of they all agreed and i feel like that's probably where we are now with uh, with um with uh, vr because everyone is trying to figure out what they're doing no one is really having any sort of average between the games to kind of settle on because the community is there's not enough sampling for the community to kind of settle on it yet and meanwhile, the modding is probably going to go through this whole interesting um, change, too, because people are modding now. But what's going to happen when the developers start catching on and everything is just VR and it's all done? And then I guess the modders will be modding something else and changing something else how they want. Sure. Well, so. Play PlayStation VR, they, they basically said when they first started talking about the new version of it, is what Sony wants to do going forward is anytime they release a AAA game, they would, their dream is for you to be able to play it in either mode as soon as you get it. So if you don't have a VR headset and you want to play it flat, you can play it flat. If you want to play it in VR, you can throw the headset on and play the game in VR. That, right. is, that is a dream for everyone. And that's how it is these years. You have to be something where everyone gets what they want because 2022, it's kind of like that. Yeah, it, it really is. And um, the best way I could describe where they went wrong with Hitman 3, it's like they took a few developers from the team who never really played VR games and asked them to do the mod for VR. So some of the things that you would naturally do anywhere else, you can't naturally do in this. And it's not just because, like, you know, just to bring up weapons, like anyone who has a headset has played Half-Life Alex, 
and you know how easy it is to just hold a button and pick your weapon and let go and there's your weapon. Right. This, this you bring up an internal menu and select and it brings you back into the game. They've promised that they're going to work on issues around VR, but no specifics as to whether or not they're going to fix some of those things. My hope is they continue to improve on it. But again, if you just want to kind of chill and just be in that world of Hitman, it is worth playing. I, I really do feel that way. It, it is still fun. If Once you overlook some of the jank, you'll be like, this is actually fun. I'm digging this. Like, you know, you can still take a guy, knock a guy out, put his clothes on, drag him and put him into a you know, you got to grab him and drag him and throw him into a cabinet and close the door to hide his body so they don't find it as you sneak around. And the sniper gun is actually a lot of fun to use, but there are some things about it that still need some work. So, um, you know, that's that's my recap of the ones right now. Now, there are others that I haven't tried yet, so I can't vouch for. Valheim has one. The game Firewatch okay. is one that's working. There's also a Discord I'm going to share the link to um, down below, which is just flat to VR modding. And there's tons of people on there that are sharing their mods or talking about the development of each one. And that's actually where the Resident Evil ones were announced and released on that Discord. So if you're into this topic at all, and if you are still listening at this point, you are, I strongly recommend that you go ahead and uh, and join that Discord and, and follow along with the mods as they come out. Because PC may not be releasing that many VR games right now, but the modding community is stepping up and making that all better. So now that we talked about, um, you know, the modding that's there and that's great. And uh, that's awesome for people that are in it and looking for the next thing. And maybe they want to get an insight to what's good and what's bad. What about someone that is, is, is new to the world completely? They got VR. They want to get into, into the modding because they want to play some of their favorite games in a better way. How do they go along doing that? Is it just going over and downloading the, the game in a different way? Is there any other process, part of the process to do that? Great question. So all of these just come with instructions. So some of them are hosted on a GitHub. Some of them hosted on Patreon. So there's no like central place you go to get all the mods for VR. But most of the time, the process is this. Install the game clean on Steam. Then drag some files from the mod into the directory. And then open it and set the settings a certain way sometimes you have to set your settings a certain way close the game then drag the files over but they're very clear instructions once you do it that's it you're done that's all but the instructions will it's not like um you know look people mod skyrim they have 800 mods they're using the mod organizer and all of these things it's not yeah. like that it's not like that for vr mods there's just a couple of files some of them like the the uh, cyberpunk one from the guy from vorpix he literally just gave you an installer and you double click it and it installs it like any installer. oh wow yeah there you go so and what if what if somebody wants to play it the uh, the original way again they have to they have to reinstall the game yeah it, sometimes you do sometimes you don't sometimes you just have to rename some files to go back to the other way it really depends on which mod it is they all have different ways to do it. and they, again the guy who had an, an installer has an uninstaller, so, so you can remove it. There you um, go, of course. There's no, I don't know if any of them gives you the option to just choose which one you want to do because they're just, they're messing with the engine files to change the way it launches. Right. Um, but on a game by game basis, it really varies on, on how it gets done. But I will tell you, I had no experience with modding any of this stuff, nor do I want to spend the time doing it. So for all of these that we talked about, it was really a very quick process. And in the case of the Wabajack one for Skyrim, it takes hours and hours, but you literally do a couple of steps. You hit go and it automatically runs for hours. And then you go back and do the next couple of steps. That one takes the longest, but it's also probably the most worth it out of all of them. Yeah, especially a game like that where it's so immersive already, even without that. Yep. Yeah, so uh, so so those are the ones that I'm playing right now. As I play more, I'll bring it to the show and talk about those as well. But you've got more than enough to get you started. Awesome. So that's it, guys. You know, take a look at, at, at uh, what's happening now. Uh, we're going to give you the links for those. And uh, what VR games are you playing? There's so many out there, so many coming out. And uh, it just seems like there's so much more every single few months. Uh, besides, you know, all the headsets we've been talking about for VR, and besides all the accessories that are, that are starting to come out for everything. So we're really entering this whole new world uh, of technology with VR, with the metaverse and such. It's exciting to watch. 
And uh, now you're here to hear from Rob. These, these are the best ones to look out for. And if you find one you think is great, let us know in the comments below. So yep. that'll do it here for uh, Ready, Headset, Go. I'm Tony Hanson, Joey Rob's France, and we'll see you next time.